Hello and welcome to our discussion of the production budget. This is the second budget in the series. We previously talked about the sales budget. Now we're moving to the production budget and then eventually we will talk about three budgets underneath of it that really lead into that production budget. So we'll see that in just a bit. If we're going to produce X number of units, we need to make sure we have the materials, labor, and overhead to do so. So with the production budget, keep in mind this has to be produced after the sales budget. We need to know what we're going to sell before we can determine what we're going to produce. And again, as I mentioned, once we do have this production budget, we're going to be able to complete three budgets to, uh, to support that. In order to produce units, you need to have a certain amount of materials, you need to have a certain amount of labor, and you need to have a certain amount of overhead. And we're going to have an example on this in another session altogether, an example, a textbook problem dealing with this. But for now, we're just going to talk about the high-level overview. So I want to make one point here, production versus purchases. It really all depends on what type of firm you're in. Are you dealing with a merchandising firm that just buys and sells products? If that's the case, it's not going to be quite as complicated because you don't have to worry about building the product. You just have to make sure you buy enough to sell. So that second bullet point up above talks about the three other budgets. Those are only needed when we're dealing with true production because if we're purchasing finished goods, if that's all we do, then we don't need other materials. We don't need labor related to building it, and we don't need overhead related to that either. So that's what I might want to make a point. Here, in accounting classes, when you talk about budgeting, you're generally talking about managerial accounting or cost accounting. And as such, you tend to step away from the merchandising firms where they just purchased ending inventory. And now in cost accounting and managerial accounting, you're tending to focus more on manufacturing companies. As such, we're going to need to talk about the production budget. So here's an overview of the budgets. These are not all of them necessarily, but these are most of the operating budgets, and there are a couple of the financing budgets as well. But I just want to show how everything interrelates. So we already talked in the last section about the sales budget, and that leads to the production budget, which is where we are right now. Once we deal with the production budget, we can fill out the three, three budgets in green here, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. Now, with the production budget, what we're going to find is that we don't just produce enough to hit our sales. We talked about this in the sales budget discussion. We don't just produce enough for that period sales. We produce enough to get us a little bit of the way in the next period, just so we don't run out of stock on day one of the next period. Because of that, our production budget not only leads to these three green budgets, but it also leads down here to the budgeted balance sheet because of ending inventory. We're going to have X number of units left over after our production that we did not sell, and that's intended in many cases, and we're going to have that in the balance sheet as one of the inventory accounts. It could be work in process. It could be finished goods. So we're going to see that there. So that's how this links to the balance sheet. We're going to talk about the other budgets in later discussions. Really, for this session, the the up to the green budgets, that's what we're focusing on. Now, again, I've said this a couple of times, most companies don't want to just produce enough to sell. Now, even though even companies that have lean inventory systems, what that's basically saying is they don't want to have a lot of excess inventory left over, but it's usually a good idea just to have a small margin just to make sure on day one of the next period that you have enough to start sales. You don't want to run out of stock because you may lose customers that way. When dealing with inventory, there's always a balance between having too much to accommodate the potential for spikes in demand. So yes, you're going to make sure you met everybody's demands, but there's a lot of cost for maintaining so much extra inventory. On the other hand, if you try to minimize that cost of maintaining extra inventory, if you reduce it too much, then you run the risk of stocking out and upsetting customers, losing customers. So you have to find a happy medium for, for that. 
And again, you when we're dealing with these problems out of a textbook or even in real life, you want to know what is the company's policies on inventory maintenance. And what that means is what is their desired ending inventory? So how much do they want left over for the next period to start that period? Uh, let's see here we have again a lot of times it's a percentage of next period's expected sales that's the simple way of doing it but read the text question closely because they could be giving you other alternatives you want to have so much left over so many units left over a number whatever so we want to make sure at the very least that we meet enough produce enough to meet current month's sales but again we're also going to want a little bit of extra inventory based on next month's inventory as well. Now the key thing to remember here though, so we know we're going to need to produce enough for this period sales, plus we're going to need enough for next period, 10% uh, of next period sales let's say, but remember we already have some at the beginning of the month because last month had ending inventory. So whatever number we have from last month is going to be starting over as this month, this next month's beginning inventory. So those things are what we need to know in order to develop our production budget. So here we have an example of a production budget. Now this is for the quarter April, May, and June, the quarter ending June 30th in this case of 2018. So the first thing we're going to need to know is from the sales budget. This is the way it links from sales to production budget. We have sales units and that's all we're doing. We're not dealing with the dollar amount we're dealing with the sales units because that's what we produce. We produce units of a product. So these are our sales units. You may recall these are the exact same numbers from our earlier example in the sales budget discussion. So we certainly need to produce that, but we also need to produce our desired ending inventory for that month. So in April, for example, we have sales of 8,500, but we also want to produce a little bit extra and in this case it's 3600 so you may question where did we pull this 3600 from if we look down here in the textbook you're gonna see the requirements and in this case it says that the desired ending inventory is 20 percent of the next period's sales units so the next period which is May their sales units are 18,000 20 percent of that is 3600 so we always have to look forward, in this case the line immediately above it, and bring that 20% back to here. For May's desired ending inventory, it's 4200 which is 20% of June's $21,000 in sales. For June's desired ending inventory, it's 3000 So here's our first little bit of complexity. Usually we'd look forward to the next month to find the sales of that month multiplied by 20%, but we're at the end of our quarter. So what do we do? We need to have sales forecasts for later months. Even though it's outside of this quarter, we need to have this data. If Either that or the textbook would have to give you this amount. In most textbook problems that I've seen, they give you the next month, which is 15,000. 20% of that is 3,000. So we're good to go. We'll talk about August in just a bit here. Now, the quarter, usually this is a total column. So we add up these three months of sales, we get 47,500. But here, the quarter is 3,000. That's certainly not the sum of these three amounts. What we're doing here, this is not a sum in this case. This is at the end of this quarter, what is our desired ending inventory? And that would be the very last month. It'd be 3,000 units because that's the end of that quarter. Total inventory requirements is simply adding those first two lines up. So 12,100 for April. Now that will remain an actual total for those three months, 50,500. Now again, this doesn't mean we have to produce 50,500 units. We need to make sure that's available somehow but we had some of those units to begin with because every month we've been desiring an ending inventory so that means when we get to the next month we have that as beginning inventory so now this one 1700 
So there are a couple things to notice. Sometimes a textbook will just flat out give you the beginning inventory for your very first month. In other times, they uh, they might tell you what March's data was, and then you can just carry forward ending inventory to beginning inventory of April. But the way this particular requirement was set up, it's actually pretty simple. March's ending inventory would have been 20% of April's sales, so that would have been the ending inventory, which carries over to become the beginning inventory. And in that case, 20% of April's sales is exactly that $1,700 or 1,700 units. So that would have been March's ending if everything went according to plan. And assuming we met that target, that would become April's beginning. So in April, for example, we want to make sure we had 12,100 available somehow but we already had 1,700, so that means we only need to produce 10,400 for April to, to do all everything we want, to meet the sales, to meet the desired ending inventory, and considering our beginning inventory that we started with. So that, again, over in the quarter column, that will be a total amount. So now let's look at uh, July. We said we need July's sales to determine uh, the desired ending inventory for June, and that would also be the quarter. It would be 20% of 15,000. So why do we have August sales? The reason we have August sales is to determine production for July, in part, because remember, uh, the desired ending inventory for July is going to be 20% of the 20,000 units in August. That's the only way we'd get this 4,000 units is if we knew July, August's sales. So once we get that, that 4,000 units, we can then, then go through the same calculation we did before. And remember, 3,000 came from the end of June. Now this 16,000 budgeted production, it's not part of our actual production budget for this quarter, but it's going to factor into our materials budget in the next section that we discuss. That is why you need two months out after your quarter. The first month is just to get the, the last month's ending inventory, but the second month out, August, is to get July's production, which is not going to be used in this budget, but it's going to be used in the materials budget. Now, that's as I've said in the sales budget, that's the two layers you need to worry about, or I should say three layers, this budget, or the sales budget, production and materials, those three layers, you don't have any further depth to it. So there's absolutely no reason you would need to see September, October, November, any of those other sales numbers for this particular problem. If everything is a budget for the quarter ending June, then you only need July and August to help finish up some of those budgets as we've talked about. Again, I put an asterisk. Uh, next to each of July and August, and this one should actually be a double asterisk. Here are the notes related to it. Same exact rule we saw in the same. So that takes us to the end of the discussion on the production budget. The next one we're going to talk about is the materials budget, which uses this data and it carries on. This is the materials are part of the cost we need to incur to be able to produce what we expect. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you in the next budget discussion.